We live in a world that rarely lets us honor our feelings. How can we give our sadness space when we need to show up for 12 hour work days and smile at our customers and colleagues and teachers? How can we listen to the lessons that our bodies and minds are trying to tell us when we distract away our free time with social media? I have been feeling a lot of big and heavy feelings recently. My younger self would have thrown myself into work to distract the feelings away as much as possible. But 24 year old Jade is trying to process all my my feelings with awareness and to allow space for real internal growth. Maybe you've heard the phrase, oh, go process your feelings, but you have no idea what that looks like. So here is how I process my feelings on a quote unquote bad day. Good morning, friends. I just woke up and I feel very anxious. My chest feels very tight. I, yeah. I just, I sense this is the kind of day where I'm gonna overthink things a lot and I'm gonna be in my little head a lot and I sense there's a lot of big emotions here and I just wanna take you on a day where I don't feel my best. Um, firstly, because the internet needs more realness, but secondly, because I really want to show you that there are no bad emotions, you know, there are just emotions. I think society teaches us to suppress any emotion that doesn't serve the hustle capitalist agenda. We're so happy to show our happiness, our joy, our motivation, but we're a lot less likely to show our sadness, our grief, our feelings of loss, our loneliness, our anxiety, our depression, our turmoil, and all emotions want to do is be expressed. That is it. That is what my 10 day Vipassana meditation retreat taught me, is that emotions, they're impermanent. They just wanna rise, be felt, be expressed in your body and then they'll go away. They've been expressed, that's it. They have that little moment and then they go away. And it's only when you suppress them that they stay and that they, they stay in your body in other ways. There's a lot of research and books about how trauma stays in your body. So when you don't express your emotions, it lingers, you know, it can cause illness and disease. It can be expressed in your personality in other ways. It's how you get triggered by things in life when you have these unhealed patterns that you don't want to look at because you don't want to let the emotions out. So how am I going to process this sadness and heaviness? I'm going to show you. <laughs> so when I feel like this, I am so tempted to stop doing all the routines and activities that serve me. Like when I have this heaviness here, I just want to do nothing. I want to curl up and scroll for 10 hours, which I know makes me feel worse. <laughs> and so sometimes the biggest kindness you can give yourself when you feel heavy emotions is to be disciplined with yourself and doing things that you don't necessarily want to do, but which do serve you. That's kind of adulthood, isn't it? It's healing your inner child by also being your inner parent. So I can feel my little child is really scared and sad, but my inner parent is gonna, is gonna serve this, is gonna allow this to be expressed here. I'm gonna start today with a half an hour meditation. I always try and start my day with meditation, especially recently because I've been feeling a lot of big emotions. And the beauty of meditation, especially when you practice it a lot, is you notice how it gives you space from your emotions. So when you don't meditate, your emotions kind of are you. Like you are in them, you are in the eye of the storm. Like if you're really sad, like you are your sadness. If you're really angry, like your whole body takes over that anger. But in meditation, it teaches you to be the space of objective awareness. So you are the space that observes the emotions. You are the space, the conscious space where emotions arise and that allows you to have some distance from them. You're still processing them. You're still very much looking at them. You allow them to be there, but you're not identified by them. Yeah, 
I, I need I need that distance today. I feel very yeah very anxious <laughs> i personally love the app waking up i've used it for maybe three years now but there's also so many other amazing meditation apps like headspace calm you just gotta find what you like and also when i feel like this i'm not going on social media i'm not here to compare my life to others we're not doing it jade we're not doing it i want to do it I want to go now and tap on my little Instagram, but I'm not going to do it. I have this app called Opal that blocks all my social media apps, and it means that whenever I want to go on them, I have to unblock my apps, and I can only ever unblock them for 15 minutes tops before it gets blocked again, and I have to go unblock it. It's like a very strict app. It's stricter than like the Apple screen time thing. So I am in control of my notifications. Anxiety can arise for many number of reasons. <laughs> I just finished the half an hour. Oh my god, it makes such a difference. It makes such a difference. Halfway through the meditation, I felt this intense wave of sensation going through me and I just started crying. I started like, just like sobbing and like tears were flowing. But I was very much still in the meditation. Like I was so aware of all of it. I wasn't the crying, I was the awareness of the fact that I was crying. Light is so important. There's been so much research done to show how getting sunlight in the morning, especially in like the first 40 minutes upon waking up, can change your whole day. So I have this Lumi lamp, which is amazing. Like, look at this. It wakes me up with light and it mirrors daylight. So even in the winter, I can get my light, but I'm gonna open my curtains go for a walk my brain will thank me what happens if i lose my way with the compass and a map i made looking for my shadow in the dark what happens if i look for you with the compass and my tennis shoes and find you holding someone else's guys heart? look at this sun <laughs> It's been cloudy all day, so having the sun shining in is just, it's so nice. Okay, so when I feel like this, I feel like I need guidance. And that's why I love guided meditations, or going to a yoga class. And I really love journaling, and I don't do a lot of guided journaling. So I'm really excited to try this, this learning path on Skillshare. It's called Reconnect to Yourself with Guided Journaling, and it has multiple classes so it has visual journaling or this one which i'm excited for which is writing for self-discovery six journaling prompts for gratitude and growth reorienting towards gratitude when you feel low is very useful because it reminds you that your life is not hopeless and sad but you actually have a lot of goodness to focus on I've got this new journal that i can't wait to use it's from papier and it says my name on it and it says notes on dreams and i want to start dreaming again if you've never heard of skillshare i feel very honored that i can be the first one to tell you about it because it is amazing it is an online learning community where you can learn all kinds of incredible skills, especially for creatives. You know, I've learned so many skills, things like frameworks for productivity, things like how to edit on Final Cut Pro, how to use AI in your creative process, how to learn creative writing or drawing skills. Like it's so vast. And in particular, I love their learning paths because sometimes as a new learner, you just don't know where to start. Like you have a goal, you wanna learn something, but you, you don't know which classes to pick. If you wanna take more time to reconnect with yourself and your emotions, but you have no idea where to start, then I think starting with a learning path like this is a good plan. And the first 500 people to click the link in my description can get a month of Skillshare for free, which is amazing. I first started using Skillshare on a YouTuber's free trial, so definitely seize it. Only 500. Okay, I'm gonna drink my tea and I'm gonna journal. So in this exercise, we're gonna be talking about cultivating joy. I thought joy was about having fun with my friends, you know, hanging out, um, being success successful in my career, um, all of the kind of external things. And I didn't realize that a lot of my makeup and my understanding of joy was with the mind frame that it would be brought to me by those in my lives, that there would be people that Ooh. would make my joy a priority Fast. for them. And it was a long journey into realizing that it was my responsibility to make joy.
We are each responsible for cultivating our own happiness. Ah, so true. That's something that was important to me. And I don't think we often think about joy that way. We wait for it to happen. We wait for something funny to happen. We wait for, you know, someone to bring it to us. But this is a way where we can have this list. And then when, the, when things get tough, we can have this to reference back to and begin to bring that joy back into our own lives. What brings me joy? This class, Writing for Self-Discovery, Six Journaling Prompts for Gratitude and Growth. Wow. Wow. I'm on the eighth prompt and I had to write a letter to my younger self. I swear, when we are struggling with big emotions in our adulthood, the majority of the time it comes from things that our inner child is scared of or that were not healed in our childhood. And so it is very healing to write to that younger self and to like acknowledge whatever they were going through and to kind of give the healing words of affirmation that maybe you never heard when you were a child. It's big stuff, it's big stuff. And it's funny how like journaling and like the healing process in general, like it doesn't always make you feel better straight away. Like it can feel cathartic because you're getting it out, but it can actually sometimes make things feel worse because you're finally letting all these suppressed things to come up to the surface and to be witnessed. And obviously these things are, are hard to deal with. But that is, that is the healing journey. It is allowing the mess to come to the surface and to sit with it and to listen to the lessons that it has to teach. Then we grow. I wish this is more of what self-development online was. Like I got so sucked into the productive self-development side of YouTube, but the older I get, the more I realize that true self-development is, is like this stuff, it's the internal work, it's the therapy, it's the, wow, it's the mindfulness, the meditation, the almost listening less to other people. Like read fewer self-development books, like stop, intellectualizing everything and just listen to yourself because you actually have all the answers that you need even though it's it's hard to believe that i'm very fortunate that today i happen to have therapy so she's gonna hear a lot <laughs> ah. i love my therapist so much i use a therapist on better help I've been with her for like a year and a half and I think this is one of the best investments I've ever made in my mental health. This is my casual magic today. Roy Boy's tea from Cape Town. Again, so easy to let the basics slip when you feel bad. But the thing is, the more you let the basics slip, the worse you feel. So you gotta care for the body to care for the mind. Something I've been thinking about in the last few days is how difficult it is in the modern world to honor your feelings like the world is not built for us to honor them at all i look at my roommate who i adore and she's a corporate lawyer and she's out the house by like 7 a.m and sometimes not back until really really late like midnight <laughs> she just has to be like go 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 all the time and you know she can't wake up one day and feel really sad and not go to work. <laughs> like, she can't be like, yeah, I should get more sleep because that's what my body needs. Like, no, she can't do that. She has to go to work. And even schools, education, right? It's like, if you've got an assignment due, you've got to do it. If you've got an exam in a week, you've got to revise for it. Like, life is so unforgiving. And in the past, I 
have never honoured my feelings because I, I've always cared so much about deadlines and achievements and doing well in them. So yeah, my feelings were like the lowest priority. But what I am starting to learn as I come into adulthood and have more flexibility in how I spend my time is that all the greatest growth that you can have as a human starts with you acknowledging your emotions and the more that you unpack them, the more that you look into the causes of why you are the way that you are, the more you heal and the more all of your life gets better, the more that your relationships improve, the more self-awareness you have, the more that you make choices that serve you. Yeah. I wish society was designed to value this. Like introspection is the root of growth. Lean into your feelings, my friends, if you can. And it doesn't need to be a whole day. It doesn't need to be a self-care day. It literally can be doing one thing, one meaningful thing today that actually honors how you feel and doesn't squash it, right? Like it's not watching Netflix. It's not distracting it away. It's not going for drinks with people and talking about frivolous, fun, cute things. It's doing a meditation or a yin yoga session that forces you to breathe through these emotions. It's sitting with a friend and vulnerably talking about how you're feeling. Like they say, how are you? And you say, actually how you feel, not just a cute little good. It doesn't have to be big. What if every single human did one thing every day to honor their feelings? One thing, like journaling, being honest with someone. My God, I think this whole world would be so much better. I think mental health would be so much better. Yeah, we'd all live more honest and meaningful lives. <laughs> okay, I'm already feeling better but now I need to move my body because you've got to move around the qi, as they say in Chinese medicine. Qi, life force, energy. Like if it's all stagnant, you're just going to keep feeling worse. So you've got to move. You can dance, you can walk, you can run. I am going to go to a yoga class because I'm on a site like first timers unlimited class thing for two weeks. So I'm trying to seize that and yeah it's a power vinyasa so i'm gonna get moving flowing and move move this energy <laughs> Processing your emotions means that when they come, you do your best to sit in them. And this is so hard when you are out and about, especially in London. British culture do be reserved though. But yes, if you have the space, the ability to feel a full emotion, to cry, to, if you're angry, like move your body, like process it. It feels good. It feels necessary and it's, it relieves the stuckness, it just gets it out. So feel your emotions. <laughs> I actually have a networking event tonight, which is really not, not the vibe for today, but I am actually gonna go because people generally make me feel better and I have a few friends going and I just wanna see them. I'm gonna leave the vlog here, but I'm sending you all so much love and so much strength to deal with whatever it is that's going on in your life. No situation is ever too small. You know, you don't need to have certain big tangible things happening in your life in order to feel heavy emotions. All of your emotions are valid and 
all of our heaviness is worth being acknowledged in some way. So don't ever feel guilty for feeling low. You are not broken. This is the beauty of the human experience and the depth to which you can feel your negative, negative emotions is also the depth to which you can feel all your beautiful positive emotions. And so embracing the fullness of the human experience will serve you. Bye, I love you so much. And please comment down below your own experiences with dealing with your emotions. Because I think culturally it's so different for everyone and yeah, based on how you're raised. Also, also I've never done a video like this before, so let me know if you enjoyed it and if you'd like more like this from me. Bye.